<laughs> Come in. Thank you. Make yourself comfortable. Take some pillows. The, the, what I mean by a spiritual journey is that um, I'm a great um, admirer and a great fan of Tantra, which is a very ancient uh, philosophy uh, coming from India very related to yoga, meditation, which considers that the very special kind of energy that we produce in a sexual moment is an energy that can be channeled, that can be transformed, that can be transcended and help us reach higher level of consciousness with our sexual partners. So it's a, it's a very interesting way of not considering sex as the pure satisfaction of a quest for pleasure, but it is a very, very special kind of energy that we have and that if we want, we can channel and we can transform so that it helps us elevate from the plane of normal physical life. hope in the film is that through um, having the performers look into the camera very often and by doing so establishing a connection, a contact with the viewer, hopefully the viewer feels connected with them, feels welcome in this very sexual world that they're in and through this way feeling at ease and feeling comfortable that he or she, the viewer, can reconsider their uh, perception of um, where, what sex can be uh, channeled uh, as a form of energy. So hopefully it, it, is, uh, it is through that connection with the performers that maybe it can open our, our minds to a different way of perceiving the sexual energy. work in the sense that you are watching naked men and naked women uh, interacting in a very intimate uh, kind of way. So in that sense, yes, it's erotic because it is about sex and it, it's about nakedness and naked interaction. But it's not pornography because it's not about arousing the viewer. It's actually about helping the viewer use the erotic pleasure and the erotic energy of the piece, but take it somewhere else. When I decided to do it as an installation, and then one night I woke up and thought, okay, if I want to be really logical with myself, I have to be naked in the installation, welcome the people as the maker of the piece, naked myself, which I did in Berlin when we did it the first time. Um, and it was a, here also you were and here at I, I actually was naked the first three days with <laughs> Celine and Case because there was just all of a sudden too many people and we were not ready to, um, we needed to be three. So I was, I was here as well. And it was, it was a big, big threshold for me to push myself to my to the end of my own logic and seeing if that's what I'm promoting the idea that nakedness can be a way of sharing more intimacy and transcend the purely sexual uh, energy of it then I have to do it myself and transcend the fact that I'm that I'm a mature man that my body is no longer the, the, the body that I used to have but but accepting it and 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 offering it in a way as an example of my own challenge of transcending my own boundaries it was an incredible liberating incredibly liberating experience and for the performers as well. It was for each of them very liberating because it was like, yeah, crossing a border. <laughs> and you just told me you're also one of the people on the Yeah, I'm, I'm this one here. <laughs> Our body is the last territory upon which we have any kind of power. We feel powerless now in front of politics, religion, ideals. I mean, we, do, we don't really have control over much. I mean, we're, 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 uh, our data is not private anymore. Everywhere we go, we're spied by CCTV cameras. And, but our body is the last territory where we're completely free to decide what we do with it. Sexually, sports-wise, health-wise, how we eat, how we sleep, all of this. So 
nakedness bears a new meaning now. It's like, it's like um, sharing and showing what we have power upon and what is truly us and what is truly ours. So th there's a whole new type of relationship to our own body that I think needs to transcend the norms and the aesthetic norms that we are imposed by advertising mostly, you know, by publicity. Your film, um, The Good Old Naughty Days, has a lot of pornography. But that's different, it's because it's so funny. It's a, to me, it's a very, very funny film to discover that between the films I, I collated in The Good Old Naughty Days are, were made between 1902 and 1927. And they were made uh, by, um, as jokes, almost. And um, it's really, really funny to discover that our great, great grandparents basically had exactly the same fantasies and the same sex life or the sex obsessions you know that we have today so i love that that distance that this brings so yeah it is porn it is a compilation of porn films um, but I, I edited them, restored them, and, co and compiled them so as to have a, 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 a funny look back on the human dimension of our ancestors. That's what I like about it because it shows that we're, we're, we were always the same and basically and we haven't invented anything new. I mean, everything we see in porn films today was already then. The films that are compiled in the good old naughty days were mostly shown in brothels, in whorehouses, and they served as sexual education for young men who were taken by their cousins or by their uncles, never by their fathers, um, to the brothels. And they would, the first two or three times they would go, they would watch these films. They would get acquainted to the naked female body, and then after two or three times, then they would be offered the opportunity to um, uh, practice. Um, but uh, those films became like, they, they were actually screenings with a printed program at given times in the most elegant brothels where they would have actually like in the, in the, in the lounges, they would have like a screen and, and a projector and, and everyone would come to watch the latest ones. And those films would travel all over Europe you find the same movie, films in Spain, in Italy, in England, in France, and Germany.